Hey my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're test driving the 2021 Buick Encore GX, the new model that slots in just above the base Encore. And this is my very first time test driving a Buick. So I'm gonna show it to you inside and out. We're gonna take it for a test drive and then I'm gonna tell you what I really think. Okay, my friends, before we get out in the test drive, let's take a quick moment to look at what we've got. This is a near fully loaded Buick Encore GX Essence trim grade. This has front wheel drive, though you can opt for all wheel drive, but it has virtually everything else. The 1.3 liter turbocharged three cylinder engine, which is an option over the base 1.2. And as such, we're priced out at about $35,000, a little bit of change. This starts out at about $25,000. So looking at the front, you can see a lot of chrome. This has an all new design in the last year that mimics a lot of the other Buicks you see in the showroom. And right now Buick does have a pretty new showroom. A lot of the new designs are there. And looking at the headlights, we've got LED headlights down below, LED fog lights. The wheels on this, these are optional wheels. Actually, they're quite elegant chrome inserts for 18 inch wheels with sort of a metallic silver finish. And this is actually an optional color of paint as well. As we come down the side, you can see that this has the expected and very common now black plastic cladding along the lower rocker and the wheel arches that we find on crossover SUVs. But looking at the three quarter view, a couple things I wanna point out here that I think make this an interesting look, and that is the kick up here in the rear window line. But look at this piece of chrome that comes all the way back and dies in to the rear window. And that really gives us a separation of the roof and that allows for a two-tone combination. They have a black roof option on this. And when we get to the back, this has a power lift gate that's operable with both the key fob as well as the foot under the bumper with a little bit of a radar sensor there. It's great for when you've got arms full of groceries and that both opens and closes with the power assist. Looking at the rear, a nice shoulder line dies into those taillights, which are LED. The interior of the Encore is a place that, as I expected, would be a welcome, easy on the eyes place to be because Buick has, has always of late created interiors that were pleasant to look at and had pretty good materials. Here, not a disappointment at all. I've got a nice finished trim across the dash that's got a print on it that looks good. It has an elegant look against the cream backdrop and a nice stitched looking soft surface. It's not actually stitching, it's molded, but it is appealing to the eye. As I look around, the material quality is pretty good. There are some hard plastics in a few places where your hand falls, but that is to be expected in this class. Because we're in a fully loaded Encore GX with the Essence package, I have leather seats. These are heated seats. They're actually pretty comfortable. They're a lot firmer than I expected in a Buick. The last few that I sat in uh, had a little bit more soft padding going on, but they are very supportive. They're comfortable. They're better than some I found in some recent Fords of late. These seats are power both for the driver and the passenger, and the driver does have memory settings. A really nice instrument cluster with a large digital screen in the center. The display is customizable, but doesn't have quite as much information sets available as some of the competitors. This one also has a head-up display, which is rather interesting. This one actually has a reflector piece that pops up every time you start the car, and that's just something a little bit different. It doesn't actually reflect off of the windshield. This one is also optioned with the panoramic moonroof, which gives a nice airy atmosphere here. Center console, very simple design. The climate control is right in the center along with the heated seat controls. Down in the bottom is a cubby large enough for your phone, and it should be, there's a wireless charger down there, and all of the connection ports that you would need along with a 12 volt outlet. Buttons across the bottom, a traditional shifter, I like that. Cup holders off to the side, and a nice big bin down here at the bottom for even more stuff. Opening this, there is a small tray right here in the top of this, which blocks access to a pretty nice deep area, but um, this is just kind of an awkward thing. It's in the way. It's a great thing to put your masks in, but um, uh, I don't know. Sitting in the back of the Encore GX, you're not going to mistake this for a midsize or a large crossover SUV. It does feel snug, but even such, with these seats set for my height about 5'8 and 5'9 with my boots on, I still have reasonably good legroom 
and um, even if somebody came back a little bit I'd be doing fine now the seat height where I'm sitting is actually pretty good as you can see my knees aren't perched up in the air too high but the seat is sort of flat and unsupportive and it just the position just sort of feels odd to me it doesn't it doesn't feel like I'd want to spend a lot of time back here on a long road trip as I look around I am missing a few amenities back here for this price range 35 grand most of the competitors are going to have vents back here ac vents very important when it's hot here in arizona there are charging ports down at the bottom two usb ports and an ac outlet so that's there but missing are the vents also missing at this price range is any sort of adjustability for these seats they don't go forward or back they don't have a recline adjustment they do however fold down in a 60 40 split giving you a nearly flat load floor and the rear cargo floor does drop down a couple inches if you want to put taller items in underneath that floor is a spare tire very good in a crossover suv when it comes to rating this interior i find that it's very comfortable it's got a nice appealing look to it but there's some quality issues that i'm a little concerned about for one this dash over here on this brand new car has already got sort of a warp going on maybe maybe caused by the heat or something but i just envision that thing getting all kinds of warpy uh, especially in the Arizona sun here and here in front of me on the dash on this cream part there's three different shades of tan here that don't match up together like maybe got three different suppliers and they didn't all go from the same color splotch just things like that that lead me to wonder about some of the other things that I can't see but overall this interior gets four out of five stars the infotainment system here is the top of the line eight inch touchscreen audio and infotainment system is fully featured it has wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, AM, FM, and Sirius XM radio is standard along with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's got great graphics. It's very easy to use. I don't have any of the fussy issues working with it that I do in some of the import brands, Kia, Hyundai especially. It also has a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot standard. And the audio quality is pretty good. Voice activation for the navigation works well follows directions so I'm pretty impressed overall with it well very impressed if I'm honest five out of five stars now as most of you know the first question I always love to ask is how does it go let me have a stop here make sure nobody's around go so power isn't too bad 155 horsepower and that comes from a 1.3 liter three-cylinder turbocharged engine in this it comes mated to a continuously variable transmission or cvt if you opt for all-wheel drive you do get a nine-speed traditional automatic transmission what i find here is that this is a powertrain that is very much in line with most three cylinders i've tested it does have a different sound and a different feel power is adequate torque is adequate I will point out that I do get a little bit of torque steer when I accelerate with full throttle. So there you go. Now this is rated at 30 city, 32 highway, and 31 combined. Did I actually get that? No. In my week with it, a little bit of city, a little bit of highway, I actually achieved about 23 mpg. Way, way, way below expectations. This is something that I see when um, they give us these really tiny turbocharged engines that are meant to give us efficiency but the reality is is you have to use these engines harder in everyday driving and they tend to be quite thirsty if you dip into the power at all and so I'm a normal driver I dip into power I ask for it and I want it sometimes and that's where it comes out so in rating this powertrain I have to look at efficiency power refinement and so when I put all these things together I come up with three and a half out of five stars now I know some of you out there are going, hey, you didn't make it all the way up to 60 miles an hour. Well, for the purposes of the video, I didn't really need to. This isn't a vehicle that most people are looking for zero to 60 in. And I am in a neighborhood where it's nice to keep speed limits in check. Now, when it comes to ride and handling, most Buick customers are really more about ride than they are handling. So handling in this um, isn't necessarily top of the order when it comes to chassis tuning. Now they did give this McPherson struts up front and a twist beam axle in the rear, not the most sophisticated rear suspension that's out there. When it comes to ride, what I found, this has a pretty stiff ride for what I remember Buick's always having. I always remember Buick's uh, when I was growing up and younger having a cushier, softer ride. 
this actually rides quite firm and that does give me a little bit of a handling feel that is up to snuff with the competition out there among vehicles that you might find from Japan or Korea. Very similar. It's very quiet. That I would expect from a Buick. Very little wind noise. And it's just a comfortable car to drive around town for the most part. One thing I did notice is that over speed bumps, potholes, and the speed humps in my neighborhood, that I did get a little bit of harshness from the suspension, particularly on the speed humps. And that's something I'm always looking for because there's a lot of them here in Phoenix. And what happens is when you go over that, when the suspension drops down, you get a metal to metal contact. And so they don't have enough in the way of damping and bushings in the suspension to keep it quiet. So overall, when I rate suspension, handling, and chassis, it comes in at four out of five stars. All right, my friends, now it's time to try to put a value on this thing. First thing I really look at is the fact that we've got a brand that most people probably aren't comparing to a lot of Japanese or Korean brands such as, you know, Hyundai, Kia, Honda, Toyota. I think most people that buy this car are probably looking at maybe a Ford Escape, Ford Bronco Sport, maybe the Chevrolet Trailblazer, even though uh, this is slightly a different size than most of those. It is in the same price range and it sort of falls into the same scope a vehicle. Now base price on this about $25,000 and as tested we're about $35,000. First thing I look at is the fact that 35 grand you can buy a lot of stuff out there. You can buy a Honda CRV which is really sort of the gold standard in this area. You can buy a very well equipped Toyota RAV4 but again most people looking at this probably aren't interested in those vehicles. So looking at just things like the pricing, the quality, um, the one thing that jumps out at me is the warranty coverage. It's the shortest in the business at three years, 36,000 miles. So many other brands out there offer a much longer warranty. And anecdotally, you want a longer warranty with these cars these days. So when I look at value score, I have to put that at three and a half out of five stars. When you put that in with everything else we've already talked about, we're at four out of five stars for the review. So there you go. If you like the review you just saw, click right here, see my latest one, or better yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel right down there. Either way, stay tuned.